Hi YouTube, it's Carla. Um, so I wanted to give you guys an update about the, um, the ultrasound that I had done yesterday. Um, and again, Apollo says hello. Yes. Yes, he's very upset that he wasn't in last week's video, so he insisted on being on it, in it on this week. Okay, so um, I went in yesterday. My appointment was at uh, 10.30. They asked me to be there at 10.15, so I started chugging water at 9. I drank a liter and a half, and uh, it was uncomfortable by the time I got to the doctor's office. So luckily they got me in really quickly. Um, and the, I guess I'll call her the ultrasound tech. Um, she was really happy that I drank so much because apparently my left ovary is a little higher, so having the contrast between it and the uh, bladder was useful. Um, Okay, you're gonna have to chill out. Yeah. So when she did just the regular x-ray, pushing down on my full bladder, um, she took lots of pictures of uh, my uterus, and then she took pictures of the um, ovaries, you know, measuring them from all three different angles. <clears throat> and then I was able to empty my bladder, which was amazing. And then um, she did the transvaginal. The difference between the two was, during just the regular ultrasound, um, I could see the screen, and uh, so I was able to ask questions. I told her that I thought I probably had PCOS, that I had a lot of the symptoms, um, and I also told her that on, uh, so today is, or I guess today is cycle day 24, so when I had the ultrasound, it was cycle day 23. On cycle day 18, um, I had a really sharp pain on my right side that probably lasted 10 minutes. Um, I remember because I was in the middle of a staff meeting. Um, so as soon as I got done with the staff meeting, I went to my desk and like made a note of it, um, remembering to note the side because the cycle previous, I forgot to, to remember which side the pain was on. Um, and so this was definitely on my right side. And um, four days before that, on cycle day 14, Okay, I have to admit, I thought you guys were lying about the um, egg white CM, that you guys were totally full of crap, that um, such a thing did not exist, that it was, although it was the holy grail of fertile cervical mucus, I had never seen it before. So I'm getting ready to go to sleep on uh, cycle day 14, and I go to the bathroom beforehand, and my husband is already asleep, and I come out of the bathroom clapping. <laughs> not only to, like, cheer my body on for doing something right for once, but also to wake my husband up. Uh, so... So then when I had pain four days later, um, but then I failed the ovulation test on all four of those days, <clears throat> it kind of was worrisome to me. Um, like, you shouldn't have, like, all the signs of getting ready to ovulate and then never ovulate. To me, that would be a symptom of PCOS, um, where, like, the follicle matures, but you never get that surge to release it and ovulate. So then it just sticks around and it becomes another ugly little cyst thing in your ovary. So back to the transvaginal. So when she was doing the transvaginal, she, uh, she scooted the whole monitor kind of like towards my knees. So I couldn't see the screen anymore. So I was forced to just look on her face. I should have told her while I was there, but she makes the scariest faces. Like she looked like she was seriously concerned and scared the crap out of me. Um, so the first thing she looked at was my uterus, and she looked at it for a really long time. Thankfully, she didn't take a lot of pictures, because I know if she had found something scary, she would have been taking lots and lots of pictures and making the little uh, scrolly ball measurements and everything, but she didn't. She was just checking it all out. And then she told me when she was looking at the, I'm going to look at my ovaries, because she said you'd probably feel it, because it's going to be right up against your cervix. So that kind of weirded me out, but I knew the fact that she wasn't taking pictures, that's probably a good sign. So then when she was looking at the ovaries, she looked at them fairly quickly, she took a lot of pictures, and then she was like, all right, that's, that's it, I, I think I'm done. And I was like, are you sure? Because I waited six weeks for this appointment, and I'm here now, so take as many pictures as you need. She's like, I think I got them all. And um, she wasn't like making eye contact anymore, so I asked to see the pictures. And she was really hesitant to let me see them. Um, because uh, last time Brandy went in for um, an ultrasound, and she mistook her uh, ovary for a cyst. Uh, um, I didn't want to have something similar like that. I wanted to be able to 
kind of recognize what was on the screen. So I Google imaged uh, PCOS and ultrasound images. So I knew what the, uh, the like little pearl necklace around your ovaries looked like. So when I looked at the pictures, that's exactly what I saw. Um, and some of the little pearls around the ovary, she had measured. She had little, little marks on them measuring the diameter of them. None of them were bigger than the ovary. They all were kind of consistently around. So that was good. Um, so I don't think there was anything too scary. Uh, the way my doctor works is that um, it's part of a large clinic in the city. There's lots of different campuses. And so um, <clears throat> I went to a different campus to get the ultrasound done. They'll send the images to my doctor and then my doctor usually mails me a letter saying like the findings so that I have a record. So I'm assuming if she asks for an appointment then it's probably scarier. Most likely she'll just send me a letter in the mail saying like you've been diagnosed with PCOS. <clears throat> so she said that since I'm trying to conceive, uh, hello, that I should make an appointment with an OB, hello, with an OBGYN, because uh, I don't have one. I, I just got my, stop, I got my pap smears and everything done uh, with my doctor, so now I have to find an OBGYN. And my question to you guys is, and I need some guidance here, um, <clears throat> I did... My husband has insurance. He has um, Blue Cross Blue Shield California, which is now Anthem, and I have Aetna through my job. So we're double covered. And I did a search of um, OBGYNs in the city, and there's like 164. And it's really hard to narrow it down. I don't really know anyone in the city yet, so um, I can't really get referrals. And my doctor said that she only knew of one and it was close to where I live. And where I live and where I work um, is about 30 miles away. And since I'm probably, stop please, with the city in between. So where I'm, stop, where if I'm at work on like cycle day three or when I need to go in for a follicle study, it'd be nice to not have my doctor way back home. It'd be nice to have it somewhere in the city in the middle. So she wasn't helpful in that respect. But when I did do a search, I found four doctors that were OBGYNs and reproductive endocrinologists. Three were men, one was women. Woman. So uh, I wanted to ask you guys what your next step would be. If you should I wait until the my doctor sends me a diagnosis of PCOS and then make an appointment? I think it's going to take a while to make an appointment. So. And I'm worrying on cycle day 24, which really means nothing, because who knows, the cycle could go on for 65 days again. Uh, or it could be normal for once and start menstruating in five days. Uh, who knows? Um, so should I just make an appointment with a regular OBGYN? Should I try to just go for an OBGYN slash RE? Um, because, I mean, their focus is in fertility issues. Let me know what you think, because I have no idea.